Symmetry operations, what are they exactly? Basically, a symmetry operation is when you either reflect or rotate a molecule in some way to get back the exact same molecule that you started with. Say this is a water molecule. You can see very clearly that this side is the same as this side of the molecule. So if you drew a line down here, you would be able to reflect across it, and you'd get the same thing back. You can also rotate the molecule 180 degrees and get back the same thing. So reflections and rotations like that help you define a molecule so that you can analyze its energies better, build molecular orbital energy diagrams, and get a better idea for the binding of these molecules. So, what I'm going to do now is go over basic symmetry elements. So we're going to start with an identity. An identity is basically when you rotate a molecule 360 degrees to get back exactly what you started with. If I bring back my water molecule and I rotate it 360 degrees, this is exactly what I had to begin with. Every single molecule has this kind of symmetry. It's called an identity. It basically says the molecule exists. There are some molecules that have absolutely no other way to reflect them or to rotate them. They only have the one element, E, and that just basically means the molecule exists. So, for example, if we took a molecule that had four different substituents on it, no matter how you reflect it, how you fold it, how you rotate it, the only way you're going to get back this exact same molecule is if you rotate it 360 degrees. So this molecule is probably the easiest to assign a kind of symmetry element to because it only has E. Say that I've got BF3. Well, you can clearly see, same on both sides of the molecule. So this has a reflection. And we tend to call reflections sigmas. The next thing we need to look at is an axis of rotation. This is, for example, say this is BF3. I can rotate this molecule through an axis here that goes directly through the plane of the board 120 degrees. So if I rotate this molecule 120 degrees at a time, I'm going to get back exactly what I started with. Since you can do this three times and have an identical molecule, this is called a C3 axis. This axis, if you'll notice, even though my model is lopsided, so let's pretend it's not. If we take this molecule and rotate it 180 degrees, you get back the exact same molecule you started with. This is called a C2 rotation. So we can draw the axis of rotation for BF3. You'll notice if we rotate around these, that we'll get the exact same molecule back. And there's also a three-fold axis right here. So you'll notice I'm using a little bit of labeling here to help keep things separated. A C3 axis is labeled with a triangle for three sides, and a C2 axis is labeled with kind of an almond-shaped thing for two sides. Say we have this molecule. And to get an improper axis of rotation, basically what you need is to see your molecule rotate it, and then reflect it across perpendicular to the way you're rotating. So say I'm rotating down through here, and we go around. Now, what we do is we reflect. So we say, if this came to the top and this came to the bottom, would I have the exact same molecule? And in this case, you would. Um, and so we have an improper axis of rotation. These are labeled with S, and so if you can rotate the molecule around four times and do a reflection, this would be an S4 axis. Another thing that's difficult to catch is an inversion. For example, this molecule. If I were to draw a line through the center of the molecule, from here to the center to the atom opposite to it, if both of these atoms are the same, then they have inversion. The same thing happens here. I have this atom, the center of the molecule, and an atom down here. They're both the same, so we have inversion. If I were to change the molecule, we would not have inversion, because if we draw a line 
from this atom to the center to the atom opposing it, you'll see that they're different. So the easiest way to see if a molecule has inversion is just to switch things to their opposite places. For example, in an octahedral molecule, this would move here, front would move to back, bottom would move to top. Now, if a single atom in the molecule violates this rule, for example, if this atom is different from all the other substituents, then this can move there, front can move to back, Top and bottom can't switch because you would get a completely different molecule. So, no inversion. So the easiest way to test for inversion is just to see if anything breaks the rule. And as soon as anything breaks the rule, inversion does not exist. There's a lot of molecules we can test ourselves with. So I'm going to give a few examples in the next video of different molecules that we can try to test their symmetry. And then I'm going to give the answers so that you can check yourself.